campers, this you gotta see, the black cat. Let's check it out. The other look at the black cat folding knife. Look at this guy. Yeah. Very nice. Very good looking knife. It looks so clean. Look how thin this guy is. And it's not small. Look at that. Of course, I'm sure everybody recognizes that. The black cat with the K55 on it. I've seen this before and I've read some things about it. Thought it was time I had a look because I was back at looking at uh, traditional international knives. And this comes up quite often. A touch over my budget, not much, but that always kept me away from it. Just couldn't do it. I had to go and get me one because I hear so much about these knives. Very well known. In the US, it's just known as the Black Cat. And it's a traditional knife here from Germany. Originally came over after the Second World War. A lot of the GIs brought them over back to the US and it became basically a cult knife. Look at this guy. It's really nice. I'm impressed. Now, you know, you can't kind of expect this from German steel, uh, the quality. They're really hard to beat. Now that I have this, I can see right away. Oh, here's Mary. Say hi. That was a drive-by, by the way. <laughs> Speaking of cats, on the handle here, you can see it has that, whoops, upside down. There we go. That black and gold cat on it and the K55 on the edge of the handle. Right there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It says Mercator, Germany. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> on the blade, Mercator, right there. And on the other side, it says Germany, Solingen. Probably where 90% of the German knives are made in Solingen. Very well known area for it. Blade, uh, drop point, spear point. I'm not sure, but it's a nice blade. Look at this thing. Single grind all the way down. A little nice edge on it. See there? See how even that edge is? Really, really nice knife. The way It feels nice in your hand. I was surprised. I thought it would feel heavier, but it's not that heavy. And of course, it has this, they call it a backlock, a lock back except the release is not in that indent that we used to. It's up front and it's this piece sticking out here. Very nice. You can see it has one, two, three pins in it. Very clean. Very, very clean. Obviously to release it, push uh, this down, thumb, and the blade releases. It doesn't have a half stop or anything. And it goes in nicely on its own. I'm, I'm impressed. The, the look and the feel of this knife, unreal. This bale has the bale on there, nice solid bale. It's not some hokey bale. It's really well made. I'm, you know, just holding it, Joe, talking about it for the first time. I'm impressed. Should have got this sooner. What do you do? Let's have a look at some of the specs. Open like this, 7.8 inches. Not a small knife, that's for sure. It's got a good length to it. Look at that. That blade is really long. This, I think, I can see why it was popular. This would be a great work knife. Small, thin, sit in your pocket, wouldn't notice it. It's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. Well made. Well made. It's so clean. I can't believe how clean this is. I believe it's powder. They powder coat it, and the handle. It gets heated and it melts. It gives it a really nice finish. Interestingly enough, this logo here is stamped into it, but the gold is hand-painted in it still today. It hasn't changed much. I think the only thing that really changed with it was they put that stamp on the edge there. Let's carry on looking at the specs. So the blade, three and a half inches, maybe a little bit over, and that's two from the tip to the handle. To the choil, just under three and an eighth. Very nice. Very nice. Has an L neck, just a straightforward L neck on there. Uh, look at that. Very nice. Very nice, smooth, clean, no sharp edges. Everything is slightly rounded on this thing. There's no catching edges at all on it. So well finished. 
Thickness of the blade, 0.11 of an inch, about three mil. Closed to the engine, not to the bail, about four and a quarter of an inch. You can see it in my hand there. And obviously with the blade open like this, you can see how big it is. It's, it's, <laughs> this is a nice knife. The weight, the weight, 75 grams. Not bad. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's not heavy, heavy, but it's not light. It seems, it feels just right. And how thin this is. I want to know how thin this is. It's about an eighth of an inch. Pretty thin. Very clean. How does that blade sit in there? Look at that. Right down the center. German engineering. What do you do? The thing that really got me to go back and look at this is, you know, I've been on that history thing. Uh, any knife that has some sort of history, I want to look at. Uh, this guy has some interesting history. Too. This thing dates back to 1867. I think the original design was, uh, I want to say, Heinrich Kaufmann and Sons uh, in Solingen, I believe. It's been around a while. That's a long time, 150 years or so. And it hasn't changed that much. Back in 1995, I believe that was when uh, Mercator bought them. And they combined it. They've kept everything. They kept the factory and everything. Still make it the same way that it was originally done. Handmade. The finishing touches on this, unbelievable. A lot of it is handmade still today. It, it wasn't, you know, people think that, that this came from a military background. Uh, back in the day, uh, during the Kaiser Wilhelm period, uh, it became very popular uh, amongst uh, the military. But it wasn't designed for them anything. It just became popular. I can see why. Very nice, handy, small, thin, not going to get in the way. Very nice. I can see why this would be a popular military knife back then. That's where it originally came from. It was also known back then as the Kaiser Wilhelm knife. And I think that uh, that kind of evolved into, well, it must be some sort of uh, military background. No, it was it was designed as a civilian knife. It just got really popular in the military. And then, like I said, uh, after the Second World War, when the GIs were over in Europe, they brought these back and they became really popular. It became a, almost a cult knife and really grew in popularity. Easy to see why. This is a very well-made knife. Blade. Interesting uh, what they say about the blade. I'm trying to figure that. Here's what it says. It says the blade is carbon steel C75 or stainless steel 1.4034. Don't know what that means. And I don't know why they say or. It must be, it must be two versions. One's carbon, one's stainless steel. What this one is, have no idea. Let me just wipe this off here. But I'm not sure what it is, whether it's stainless or carbon, because it doesn't say anything on the actual knife. The packaging. Oh, the packaging, by the way, is just this plastic sleeve. And it has, you know, a Mercator knife, handmade in Germany, Otto Solingen. Let's see there. And uh, it says here, flat, light and stable finishing, a backlock. Available with carbon or stainless steel blade. Oh, this is a carbon. It says right there. It says new Mokito Black Cat Carbon. So it is carbon steel. Um, I wanted to see what the rest says here on this thing because it's say, oh HRC 56. And then he says your knife has a stainless blade or carbon blade. Neither box is checked. Uh, but it does say on the sticker, it's a carbon, you can see there. So this is the carbon blade. Shoo. Uh, I didn't realize it came in. You had that option. I prefer carbon, just a personal choice, no particular reason. You know, it has these pins in it. I'm not sure. They, all they say is steel handle with that uh, uh, powder coat paint, uh, which really makes it smooth. Very well made. So there you go. Look at that. I got me a black cat. You want to know what all this stuff means here? The K55K? You'll be surprised. The K stands for Kaufman, which was the original manufacturer. Uh, 55, you had the K for Kaufman, the original manufacturer. And the 55 was the address on some street 
where they actually manufacture it. So you had the Kaufman K and the 55 was the number on the street where they manufactured that. Interesting choice to put on there, but it certainly made it stand out. And like I said, probably more commonly known as the black cat. How sharp is it? Eh, I don't know. Let's give it a try. Uh, I've got a piece of paper here. And it seems to be... Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Sharp enough for me. If we cut a piece of wood, that'll cut that. Although I wouldn't use this to whittle the blades too long, the handle's too long. It's not a whittling knife. This is a work knife. And I'd be surprised if there's any chores at work that you use a knife for that this can't do. Outdoor activities. This would probably do a lot of things, but I will tell you that the blades are not sharp. There's no sharp edges on you except where it needs to be. So like striking a ferro rod, probably not going to happen. You'd have to uh, clean that up yourself to get that nice sharp edge on it. Would I do that? Nope. I don't think there's anything I'd want to change on this except give it a sheath. <laughs> Yeah, another flat sheath, but I think this is uh, deserves a special one. And it does have the bale, of course, on it, which is steel. The Black Cat. Whew. Very nice. I, I'm liking this knife. Magnificent. That's all I can say. Look, you know, I, I, it's hard to explain how clean and smooth this knife feels. No, no sharp edges on it. How much did it cost me? Poof. That much, yeah. Uh, Four dollars over my budget, but I think, you know what, it's kind of worth it. <laughs> I'd probably take this knife over a lot of knives out there. Utilitarian, for sure. This is a work knife. This is not some knife that you're going to put up on the wall and say, look how pretty it is. It is pretty for the style, the shape. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back. I've been looking at a lot of these knives. I, I've been waiting for some knives from Rough Rider. I'm trying to complete a set. So, yeah, I'm a Rough Rider fan, but these guys just fascinate me. All these historically well-known, with a lot of history behind them, knives. I, I love looking at them. You just can't beat these knives. It's always interesting just to to look up the history. I'm, I'm kind of a, a nerd when it comes to history stuff. I want to know. What's this all about? You will be safe out there, especially with these guys. This ain't no normal sharp and shiny, that's for sure. Just saying. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.